uh, response handling. So here we are going to learn two schemes of generating uh, responses. Uh, the first one is using built-in entity provider or sometimes we call them content handler. And the second scheme is uh, using uh, response builder class and we are going to manually create response. I will talk about these, these two schemes in detail. Uh, and uh, when we create the uh, um, response uh, for generating XML, uh, we are going to learn how we can use JAXB annotation for the domain classes. And then we'll learn how we can do that uh, with the, uh, how, how we can actually uh, use JSON content handler. We'll talk about the concept of JAXB element. And uh, then we'll talk about the uh, how to create a response for create a new item operation. Here you want to set the location response header with a newly created items URI. And then we'll talk about other entity providers or content handlers that are uh, built in in JAXRS runtime. So two schemes or two options for creating a response. Option number one uh, is using built-in entity provider or content handler. So in this case, the built-in entity provider and content handler is responsible for marshalling and unmarshalling between uh, the uh, representation such as XML and JSON and their uh, Java objects. So Java objects will be marshaled into XML and unmarshaled into a uh, Java object from XML and same thing for JSON. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, by the way, JAXRS runtime comes with a built-in entity providers for XML. Uh, so, um, and as for JSON, uh, we, uh, we are going to use either Jackson or Moxie. Uh, JSON uh, entity provider is not built in the core JAXRS runtime, so you have to include either Jackson or Moxie uh, package library into your, uh, into your application. Uh, uh, you can certainly create a custom entity provider. Uh, suppose if you want to, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, marshal on marshal some kind of custom data structure you can certainly create custom entity provider and then you can plug them in into the system option number two for creating a response is that you're going to create response yourself manually using response uh, builder class and this option is used when you need a fine-grained control for creating response for example if you want to set up a custom response headers and things like that Okay, so we are going to talk about these two options in detail. So let's start with the option number one, uh, using a built-in entity provider. So here we are going to mostly focus on XML and JSON. So here, creating a response using entity provider for XML and JSON. So yesterday we learned the concept of produces, right? In this case, if you are using built-in, uh, the uh, entity provider for XML and JSON, basically only thing you have to do is just return domain object. So here we create a new object and then we just return that object. And because you specify this producer's annotation, uh, which supports XML and JSON, when the client asks for XML, this user object will be automatically marshaled into uh, XML. If user asks for the JSON, then this user object will be automatically marshaled into JSON. So this is the simplest way to create XML and JSON. Very simple. Now, in order to use uh, the uh, entity provider for converting Java object into XML, you need to actually use JAXB annotations. Okay, so JAXB based entity provider. So when XML is created uh, by entity provider, XML entity provider is using JAXB underneath. Uh, what that means is that your domain classes need to be uh, annotated with JAXB annotations. Okay? Uh, so this entity provider is responsible for marshalling and unmarshalling of the classes that are annotated with JAXB annotations, such as XML root element or XML type and things like that. Uh, or uh, you could actually use a JAXB element type later on, uh, a JAXB element, we're, we're going to actually talk about JAXB, when to use JAXB element later on. 
For now, let's focus on domain class that is annotated with JXB annotations such as XML root element and XML type. Uh, by the way, the media types, when we talk about XML, there are actually several media types that could generate XML. So application slash XML, text slash XML, application star plus XML. All these media types will be, uh, you know, will be un understood uh, by JXRS runtime to uh, create XML. Okay, so uh, the uh, so this is another example for creating XML from Java object. Again, only thing you have to specify in this case is that you specify produces annotation indicating that you are capable, meaning this method or this class is capable of uh, generating XML data. And basically here we are just returning a domain object, in this case customer. So we search for the customer and return that customer object. So in this case, this domain class, this customer domain class needs to be annotated with JXB annotations. So let's see that example. So these are JXB annotations. So here on the top, you see XML root element and name customer. What that means is that when XML uh, document is created, I want to use the customer as a root element name. Okay, it's just like here. So this is the generated XML. So I want to use customer as the uh, the name of the root element. Okay. Well, we don't really have to do this. Uh, we don't have to specify name customer because uh, as a default, it will take the name of the customer and then use it as a root, uh, as a as an element name. Uh, so this name customer. Uh, name equal customer is probably not needed. If you want to give a different name for, uh, the other than the, the class name, then uh, maybe you can say customer X uh, and then uh, name attribute might be actually useful. Uh, XML attribute annotation is to specify that this ID attribute is going to be uh, set as an attribute. So if you see an example over here, so ID is an attribute rather than sub element. And then we have XML element. Again, you can specify the name. Uh, so in this case, we want to use a dash, uh, first dash name. So we might in fact want to specify this name attribute for this element. So here we are saying that a first name and last name, those are sub elements of this customer root element. And these are the names of the element. Okay? So if you see first name and last name, you can see these sub element names. So domain classes need to be annotated with JXB annotations in order to be uh, converted into uh, XML by the uh, XML entity provider. Okay. Okay. So let's do exercise one. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, lab documentation. So assuming you have imported all the sample Maven projects, so exercise one, uh, we are going to just run this uh, JAXRS response handling via entity provider. So here, here we are going to mostly focus on XML and JSON. Okay, so let's actually run that application. Uh, the response via entity provider. The name of uh, response handling via entity provider. Okay, so this is the one. Let's run the application. One as run on server, assuming it has been built. Okay, so I can access the uh, XML version of the user, and I can access the uh, user. For, I'm sorry, the JSON version of the uh, uh, the user, and you can certainly actually try this one with the uh, um, a call command. Okay. All right. So now let's actually see um, if you see the code. Uh, basically, we are using built-in entity providers. So, only thing we have to provide is just only thing we have to do in our method is just return uh, domain object. And of course, you have to specify this produces annotation, indicating that you know I want to generate an XML from this. And here we specify produces with JSON. And here the same code is going to be uh, the you uh, well actually the different na different method name, but the logic is pretty much the same. So we just return uh, user object. Okay. So in fact, we could actually combine these two method into a single method in which we can specify both media type application XML and media type application JSON as part of the uh, as as uh, 
uh, as part of the uh, producer's annotation. So we could do that as well. Now, as for user class, you have to specify the XML element annotation for the root element. By the way, XML type and pre uh, property order is that you know if you don't specify this one, uh, the order of the uh, the sub element in this case uh, name and age uh, that is not guaranteed. Okay, uh, because there is no concept of order in Java uh, properties, right? Uh, but in XML, you know, sometimes you want to actually see name element first before age element. So order concept is actually a valid concept uh, in XML. So in that case, if you want to specify the order, uh, uh, the then in and generated XML, then you can actually use this annotation XML type and property order. In this case, name element will be uh, uh, before the age element. Okay, when in uh, when the X, uh, in the XML that was generated. Okay, so for your own exercise, uh, you know, try to remove JAXB annotation from user Java and rerun the application and observe an exception, and then you can actually remove. Uh, you can just change, you know, put it back, and uh, so you know the. And then I want you to actually create another domain class of student with uh, student name and school and grade fields, and add a new class. Uh, I want you to create the uh, new. Uh, student resource class which con which contains methods and return responses that are created via built-in entity provider so I'm gonna actually demonstrate the first one so we'll see uh, what happens so here uh, we are going to so user is actually annotated with XML root element right okay all right so now if we uh, comment this guy out and if we run the code okay and uh, let's see whether it has been rebuilt. Okay, so it is rebuilt. So let's see what happens. So if I click uh, XML, yeah, so you see we have internal error, okay? Uh, JSON is okay, you know, because uh, JSON doesn't really require a JXB annotation. So go over here and JSON uh, is still should work fine, okay? All right, so let's actually change it back and now save the change and wait for Tomcat to reload the application and uh, yeah see one thing I want to actually kind of, I want to actually talk about is the uh, message body writer not found problem uh, so that is actually indication yeah so here I should actually mention that it's a severe error message body writer not found for application XML uh, you know basically it just indicates that uh, it just couldn't figure out how to uh, convert or marshal uh, the Java, I actually I should say unmarshal, uh, one of those two, uh, Java object to XML because it, it couldn't find this XML uh, JAXB annotations. Okay, all right, so in this case, now you know, since we change it back, now things should work again. Okay, all right, so I, that I just uh, uh, tried it myself and I want to try that I want you to try this one yourself as well and also actually add a student resource and to do the same thing so I am going to give